Hello everyone, this is to explain to you the implementation of the National Credit Framework in the schools. The NCRF circular came recently and it was supposed to be implemented from 24-25. But now as per the circular, it is supposed to be a pilot project that is going to be implemented in a few schools and then based on the results that the CBSE gets from these pilot schools, they are going to start implementing this from next year in 25-25-25-26. At the same time, it becomes our uh, moral obligation to understand what National Credit Framework is. Even if you're not participating for this year, I think we need to get ready for the next year so that we understand the credit system. Every educator, whether from you are in pre-nursery or middle school or senior school or higher secondary, you are supposed to know this and even college lecturers because this is not basically for uh, only school kids. It is right up to your PhD level. So the National Credit Framework is not for schools, it is not for colleges, it is for your entire education system from nursery to PG to post-graduation and uh, your PhD and uh, your vocational course, whether you are doing from CBC or NIS, everything will be counted in this. So as I said, it's going to be a pilot project for this year. So uh, the CBSE has sent out a form, all those schools who are willing to participate in this are most welcome to participate. If you are not willing to participate anyway, you have to do it from 2025 onwards, right? So this is what uh, the explanation is about what is the meaning of a pilot project. So what is the NCF? What is the NCRF, in fact? I'm going to explain that in the first part of this session. Uh, first of all, you know, the whole uh, credits, uh, 40 credits are being awarded per year. So it is not that you are uh, doing a weekly test or a periodic test and you are starting giving points, no. The credits have to be given at the end of the year. So starting from class 6, it is 40 points. Before that, it is not 40. It is slightly lesser, 33, 27, which I will be explaining to you shortly. And what is happening is that 30 hours is considered as one credit. So we are supposed to have 1,200 hours of uh, schooling in a particular year. 1,200 hours of schooling in a year. So that's about roughly 200 to 210 days. That's what they are saying. So if uh, 30 hours uh, are there for uh, one credit, that is why uh, we automatically, we know that if 30 hours is one credit, 1,200 hours will make 40 credits. So from six to 12, uh, they are giving 40 points each per year. And uh, some subjects are being given credits subject wise. That also I'll be showing you shortly. You can take additional credits if this is 40 credits. Also, there will be, if you take additional subjects, then you have the possibility of the, uh, taking more credits, 47 to 54 points can be taken per year, but then you'll have to take extra subjects or additional subjects, skill subjects, vocational subjects, besides your five or six subjects that is already scheduled by the uh, board. So uh, this is the academic band or the hours per learning. This is, I'm showing a chart from six to 12, and this is the credits earned. So from six to 12, it is very easy or 40, 40, 40 points. And uh, in uh, class 12, if you see the assessment is by CBC, class 10 as assessment is by CBC. That means board exams will continue. There were a lot of rumors that when the NCF and the NEP was launched, that board exams have, are going to be deleted. It's no longer going to be valid, but that's not the case. Again, this is the latest circular in which it is very clearly mentioned that 10th and 12th exams will continue. And uh, 6, 7, 8, the middle school, 1200 hours, 9 and 10, 1200 hours, 11, 12, 1200 hours. This has become mandatory and most of the schools are already doing this. 10th and 12th is boards. And if you see the credits earned is 40 per year. So you are supposed to give this 40 every year to the student. Attendance, they are very, very strict. 75% uh, attendance is mandatory. And if you see uh, the 1,200 hours, each subject is uh, allotted marks. So I'm going to... Uh, show you that in the next slide. But before that, these credits are going to be recorded in the digi locker of the student in future and of also linked to the APAR ID. And therefore, it is something which is permanent, like our Aadhaar card. Uh, it's going, there is going to be a APAR ID in which it's, it's going to be a permanent record. And also, it is going to be stored in the digital locker. So th there is no question of, you know, a student being given only 30 points in a year. The student passes... That particular year means full 40 credits has to be given. So full credit, no half credits or zero credits. So this is what the credit system is all about. So here, if you see uh, this 
screen. Uh, this is language one, language two, math, science, social science. Uh, the major subjects, the five major subjects are given 210 hours. And 210 hours means seven credits each. So they are given seven credits. So this is for class six. Health and physical education, 90 credits. 90 hours, that is three credits. Art education, 60 hours, so that is two credits. And in addition to that, if you're taking optional subjects, then you can additionally earn 7 plus 7, 14 credits. So that means, see here, this, if you add the major ones, this is 7 and uh, 5 times 7, that's 35. Then here, 38 plus 2, 40. So every student will get 40 credits when he passes class 6. And if you're taking additional subjects, then you can get 47 or 54. That is why the credits earned in class 6 can be 40 to 54, right? So this is about class 6. So uh, if you see every language is being, every core subject is being given equal credit here, seven each. Then if you go to the next slide here, you will find this is now for uh, the next class nine stage. In the class nine stage also it is, uh, we have the two languages here and we have the core subjects, English, Maths, SST, then physical education and so on. And here are the optional subject. You can choose a language, a third language here, or any academic or skill subject. And therefore, 40 points up till here. And then an additional subject or uh, a skill that you are adding on to your profile can give you seven more points. So that becomes 47 points. So this is what is uh, proposed, right? And the key principles of the NCRF is that, you know, the total... 1200 hours are there and 40 credits will be given and uh, here if you look at the national credit framework so now in class uh, 11 also same way we see the language one language two or an academic elective so here are the elective subjects depending on whether you've taken science commerce or arts you have to select your uh, subjects here. You have health and physical education, work experience, general studies. And if you're taking an additional language or any skill subject, then seven. So here, here we have again 35 points for your main five subjects. Uh, two points for health and physical education. That is 60 hours work experience, 30, uh, one credit. And here general studies is being given two credits. So 40 points here. And if you're choosing any additional thing, then seven. So 40 to 47 points for this. So what is important for us is to understand that 40 points has to be generated uh, from each. Where third, because 30 hours is one credit. So 1,200 is the minimum hours that you have to put in to get 40 credits. And beyond 40, you can go, but less than 40, it is not possible, right? So this is the entire chart. So this chart will give you an understanding of the foundational level as well. Now, as I told you, 40 credit points is starting only from here, class six. In class five, you can earn 33 points. Class four, also 33. Class three, four, five, in fact, 33 points. Class two is showing only 27 points. So as you go down, 27 points. Class one is also 27. So this is what I was telling you, that uh, uh, when you are looking at this table, the 40 points that is there from six to Right from post-graduation to post-graduation, first year, second year, third year, it goes on to PhD level. You can keep earning and these points keep on adding. Now, the advantage of this credit system is that whether you are doing a diploma or you are doing from NIOS or IB or CBC, you can shift from one college or one board to the other with ease, which was very difficult at the moment. Because if you're doing first year from a college, those first year was uh, not counted and you couldn't get admission in second year. Or you are doing a diploma course from somewhere and you couldn't go to a degree course. Now, all what you do, even one year or two years of education that goes into your diploma or any certification is going to be added to your education points. So this is the advantage of the credit framework. And hopefully after the pilot project, it's going to be implemented next year in all the schools. And uh, once implemented, the schools don't have a choice. It is going to be mandatory because it's a future of, uh, you know, the student's life. So I hope the national credit framework is clear. And those who are getting involved in the pilot project can start off by, you know, implementing it in earnest in this. And the others can go through this video and the document that is released 
uh, to understand what the credit system is and how to implement it. Because many people are thinking that uh, the credits have to be given for weekly tests and unit tests of the school. It's not like that. It has to be given only at the end of the year when the student is passing. Then uh, for the subjects mentioned, as I said, for the core subjects, most of them were showing seven points. So that makes it 35. And then the other subjects were given two points, three points and total 40. And if they've taken additional subject, they, they can score 47 or 54 points as the case may be. So every class, right, from pre-nursery to 12th to college, everybody uniformly will be implementing this from 2025. Thank you. And hope you are going to have a wonderful year ahead. Thank you so much and God bless you all.